Okay, so today I have this book up just so that because there's like good examples to reference and stuff in it. Um, but today we are going to talk about veganism generally, but the animal ethics, the environmental eth impact, and the excuses that carnists love to make. And mm -hmm. those are, it's a non-exhaustive list that'll they'll never end. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the first thing we were we could talk about is the, just the general practices. So if you if you want to like talk about how you do stuff, how and then I could talk about how I do stuff or vice versa. Um, you mean in terms of what 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 constitutes being a vegan? Yeah, what constitutes being a vegan? How you were able to implement it into your life and you know things like that yeah so for me it's been about six years february 2017 uh i just stopped cold in eating all animal products uh, i think within like the first week or two there were some accidents but after that it was just a simple you have an intuition for whether something's going to contain milk or eggs and you check and then after that you know and it's, it becomes quite easy to just exclude so you're just basically replacing meat with lentils peas beans americans eat tofu stuff like that uh you don't eat tofu i never <laughs> what you don't eat tofu no. Oh, okay no for me it's just potatoes rice lentils those are the big ones okay if you do your own cooking then you already know what you're gonna need and that's the big thing i think it's a lot like the whole carnist mindset is just routine and habit so if people are just getting takeaways or whatever they're not going to be paying attention to what they eat it's going to be just like the way i think about it is it's like sitting on a toilet you just sit on the toilet shit flush forget about the toilet the toilet was, was barely even part of the process <laughs> it's, it's, that's how i think about it it's like that's where it is. it's it's a, a bodily process you, you eat something you forget about it or you go to the toilet you take a shit you forget about it you never think about it again after that so it's just about actually starting to think about every time you eat what you're actually doing and what it constitutes the effect it has that's veganism in a nutshell isn't it uh Part yeah food, food aspect at least yeah 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 it's the food aspect um <clears throat> yeah for me it was yeah yeah exactly um i think i i did cold turkey as well like i just stopped um i'm i i remember making mistakes i just don't remember what they were but they weren't major um like maybe seeing the wrong v because like over here in america i don't know how how it's like over there in the uk but there's a certified vegan yeah there's a v on everything yeah, yeah. sometimes it can mean vegetarian <laughs> so i would yeah. like miss it when i first started but then you know I, I, once i recognized the difference it was immediately obvious if i was looking at a product and then also certain things are are just vegan you know because you know fucking apples and shit but um there are also other products like for example oreos or certain candies mm -hmm. that you just you kind of learn what the ingredients are and they're vegan not on purpose obviously but they just happen to be vegan they are entirely plant-based right fundamentally to begin with no right. ambiguity right mm -hmm. so um but yeah i i stick mostly to tofu um, it's just a really easy protein source. It's also extremely cheap. I also do lentils and beans. Um, but for some reason, tofu is just the easiest thing to prepare because it tastes like anything that you cook it with. That's one of the few things, or one of the many things that tofu is very good at. Um, you can simulate many old dishes with it. Mm. Uh, and it can complement vegetables very well as well, so... But, uh, yeah, when I first went vegan, it was just mostly tofu at the beginning. I don't know if you stuck to one food at the beginning and then slowly expanded, but that's kind of how I did things. It was mostly tofu, eventually became more lentils, rice, um, some substitutes, just, you know, if I had a weird craving once in a while, 
but that was usually because I was like deficient in something, not because I craved the actual thing. Hmm. Um. Also, multivitamin pills are are such an easy thing that everyone should already be doing. So people complain about B twelve, iron, all this stuff, but people are already deficient all the fucking time vitamin d for example people don't care about deficiencies it's only when the subject of veganism comes up that this topic of deficiencies even gets thought about people start worrying about imagined problems yeah it's actually pretty funny because <laughs> i personally had never heard of veganism until my girlfriend brought it up to me St oddly enough because she had to be convinced by me to start being a lot more conscious about what she eats and the stuff that she uses like almost all hair products nowadays are vegan um just because it's probably easier to do that than <laughs> than food for most people but uh fuck i was losing my train of thought anyway so i remember she brought it up to me and my first response was where do you get your protein and I'd never thought about this before, and that was still my knee-jerk reaction. So, yeah. <laughs> like... And that's not even a micronutrient, that's a macronutrient, protein, uh, fat, carbohydrates, it's one of the three. Yeah. Cause so it's, it's in everything? Yeah, it's in everything. And it's so ingrained in you that, like, you want protein, you eat chicken breast, you eat a steak, you eat, you know, something like that. That's what you need if you want to be an athlete, if you want to compete, if you want to be healthy. And... And a lot of that's marketing as well. Well, yep. that's deliberate. That goes back decades. Yeah. Yep. So it's just kind and of that's at the root of the whole thing. It's all marketing. Like yeah. That's, that, that dominates public perceptions. Yeah. Yeah. So really, it was I was brainwashed without realizing it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the beginning, like so much so that like I, I think I even might have brought up B twelve, and I had never thought about B twelve outside that context. Like, there was never a thought where I'm like, fuck, what if I'm deficient in B12? Never mm -hmm. crossed my mind until someone brought up veganism. So, when someone's first reaction is that, because they've never heard of veganism before, I tend to kind of understand where they're coming from. It's obviously down the line when they learn more that they still choose to, you know, not be vegan. That's where the problem comes in, I think. Um, mm. But... When it becomes a defense mechanism, when it, when it takes root and develops... Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, you remember, just a brief aside, when I made that Facebook post, I had Babushka <laughs> fucking attacking me, <laughs> and, you, and you had fun uh, dealing with a bunch of law students that were just getting tripped up on their own shit. Uh, well, that was Karnas law students with shitty apologetics, and I was dueling with them. Yeah. yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I remember you messaging me and being like, are these people for real? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and you just like entered the arena. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Uh, and that's something else I was thinking before this conversation. It's like, uh, I've, I've had loads of experience with, uh, for example, religious thinking and apologetics that comes from it. And that's part of what made me expedite being a vegan. And just doing it cold turkey because once i realized that was all it was i thought this is absolutely inconsistent with everything i stand for and the way i think and how i conduct myself and how i think how, how i operate intellectually so if i if i am not a vegan then i would just be a hypocrite so and, and a lot of that was the f seeing all these similarities to religious thinking and uh carnist apologetics it's just indoctrination in both cases it's habit in both cases yeah, that's actually a perfect segue to the next point, which is why are we vegan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we, we took the red pill. Took the red pill, yeah. Um, for me, the initial... Um, it wasn't as much of a logical choice as much as it was an emotional one. But, which, mm -hmm. was, which was eventually backed up more by the arguments and all that stuff, but... Uh, like, I've never been able to finish Earthlings because it's just, mm. like, I just can't do it. It's... I, I don't I know. I watch it, but it's not, it's, not, it's not fucking fun to watch and it's not pleasant to watch. I watch it because I feel like I have a, a duty to be aware. Yeah. 
no, the one, yeah. I, one I mentioned, what was it called? Uh, Land of Hope and Glory, I think that's uh, some British anthem or motto or something, but that's that's like a sarcastic uh, punch at how the UK is complicit in industrial animal agriculture and all the horrors that come with it. It's just as bad as, as anywhere else. And we're supposed to have, you know, all this British race, like this is a big thing. It's like a uh, like I still remember seeing this. I don't pay attention to it much anymore, but I would always see like packages of beef, and it would say uh, "raised in Britain" or "Britain raised cat or cattle" or something like that. Like what? Some fucking marketing term like that. Mm -hmm. uh, what was my train of thought now? Shit. That you would see it all the time. Yeah, I can't remember where I was fucking going there. Though I was trying to remember what the fucking <laughs> phrase was, and I lost my train of thought. Yeah, that you were talking about the phrase, and then how you noticed it a lot um, with the UK making beef, like UK bread. Yeah, beef. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would, I would see that marking, uh, and I realized that it's it's all around me, and and this society that I'm in right now. So I'm, I'm I've got to watch this documentary if it's focusing specifically on that, which is exactly what the documentary does. It's mm -hmm. about British farming, so. I don't, I don't watch it for fun, I watch it because I want to be aware and informed, I have an obligation to do that, which is the opposite of what carnists do in the face of the indoctrination they've always had. Like, they always, like, vegans shouldn't be shying away from all of these exposés on what happens inside slaughterhouses and abattoirs, all the cruelty. They should, I think, and I think this is what makes a lot of them be vegans, they should actually watch this stuff and face it, because they know they're... And, it, and that probably makes it easier. You you know that you're not participating in it. You're not responsible for it anymore. You've made a decision to no longer fund. Like you no you no longer provide the demand that causes the supply, and that's what's involved in the supply. So yeah, I I'll, I'll watch it, and I think it's easier for me because I I know I'm not responsible for it. But it's not fun to fucking watch it. It's horrific. It's horrible. No, yeah, it's horrible. Um, I. Well. I saw a bunch of stuff before I ever started watching Earthlings. Um, I guess I kind of caught the tail end of that guy, Gary Yurovsky. I can never say his mm. name. And he was basically the Earthling Ed before Earthling Ed. Um, you know, he went to campuses. He did interviews with news uh, stations, basically arguing, um, you know, why everyone should be vegan. And a, a lot of his recorded lectures use... Uh, compelling video footage of what happens to animals. Mm -hmm. um, and... Born, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and he's... There's so many things you just don't think about because it's just so ingrained in you, right? Like, oh, you need milk for calcium. Milk, everyone drinks milk, it's fine. All that stuff. And then when it's reframed as like, milk is there to make you grow. It's meant for this animal because yeah no other animal that that we know of in the animal kingdom continues to do this after after their babies it's designed for species breast breastfeeding what yeah. the fuck is this yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know you go through all this stuff i mean you learn all this stuff and you're like okay this is actually starting to make a lot more <clears throat> a lot more sense <laughs> so yep. um i i basically followed that path i think there was an email I, I, there was an email I sent him. I think I've showed it to you before. And he responded. Mm -hmm. And the reason I actually couldn't finish um, Earthlings, I've tried multiple times, is I start to get so infuriated that I just kind of wish humans were extinct almost. <laughs> like, just the amount of death we cause in this world, um, specifically with animals, is just infuriating doesn't do it justice it's just so upsetting um just like how systematic we are about it but yeah and it's so pervasive and it's so deeply rooted in society that it's conceivable that if you were to have kids they would join in with it as well <laughs> yeah even if you raise so the whole, them to whole be vegan. yeah like you could raise them to vegan they could just change their minds and the only way to guarantee that they don't join in with the fucking ongoing animal holocaust is to just not have kids you see, it's, it's an argument for fucking anti-nihilism. The, the systems we have in place. Like, if people want to talk about fucking uh, replacement rates, you know, and how many kids are born, like, 
imagine birthing kids in a, in a society with all its problems, and then you also find out about all of their suffering like three times a day. And like, imagine if you eat a fucking chicken every day or, or several times a day. Like every day for like eighty years, a kid is going to be causing a chicken to be born and be fucking kicked about, have its legs snapping under it as it as it shambles around in the fucking giant shed, and then right at the end, it gets electrocuted in a water bath, if that even works properly to stun it, a lot of the time it doesn't, and then a giant fucking saw blade just rips through its neck, <laughs> That's, that just happens. <laughs> yeah, for every chicken well. you eat, for every chicken you eat, that has to happen to a fucking chicken somewhere in some building somewhere, some industrial facility, some big cold clunking mechanical steel factory, that's that's just going on non-stop, it's, it, it's endless, it's perpetual, and as long as people are around, this is what we're necessitating, yeah, so it's, it, it is horrific. And that is infuriating that we're so complacent and we just don't care. Yeah, and that's probably the most um, frustrating thing is those people who are like bacon, though, you know, or like yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, or culture. Like I remember in Lost. When else? When else? Just on the on the bacon though thing. When else would it be acceptable to justify causing? extreme amounts of suffering which everyone admits is happening and justify it on the basis of ephemeral sensory pleasure of one one sense like, when, when would that ever happen when when does that ever fly ever can you can you think can you just think right now of any time where that would be acceptable uh no like even a king that has slaves imagine if a king fucking tortures his slaves just for fun he's gonna just get overthrown or he's gonna get stabbed in the back everyone will no one would ever accept that. There's never been a time where that's been considered acceptable. Yeah, it's basically, it's like a bullfighting or gladiatorial combat or something. <laughs> it's like, I, I like watching people kill each other, so that uh, that's going to happen now. Because I like looking at it, I like seeing the, the spurts and the air and the flashes of steel, people are now going to be killing each other. It's just it's absurd. It's, it's, an, it's like the worst argument there is. Who cares about your taste buds? Who cares? Why should anyone care? <laughs> and that actually brings me to this Joe Rogan clip I saw years ago where he's talking about how, like, fat people... It's like, you're just pleasuring your taste buds. Just fucking stop. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> bro, like... <laughs> just apply that logic yourself and stop eating all that fucking meat that you eat, you know? Um... Like, imagine if a fat person was to actually say, I just like the taste of all the food. <laughs> they would never say that. It's such a shit argument. No. They always say something else. They always have some other deeper psychological complex mechanism. They never just say, I like how this feels on my tongue. It's, n it's never as pathetic as it's that. Not. It's always more. Yeah, it's, it's such a shit argument. The chemicals, or I'm big boned, or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, it's, it's just like it's debauched. If you just say, I like how Oreos melt on my mouth or something, that's why I'm fucking obese. Everyone would think, <laughs> that is, what the fuck are you doing? Sort your shit out, that can't be the reason. Well, that's no one wants to hear reason. that. Yeah. So, and then when Karnas say bacon, though, or I like how it tastes, it's like, what? I know. So things get tortured and die now? All right. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, man. Well, well that, was, that was why when... Uh... We were having a conversation before with one of those other people. Um, I was called crazy because I said, if I had to choose between a random person and an animal, I would choose an animal. Because that animal has no choice in this. There's no decision they made that put them in this situation. That, like, they That's were... culpability. Right, um, there's zero. So, and they don't even understand what's going on. That makes it even worse because at least when I've ever been afraid in my life, the worst moments were when I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> Not, you know, and these animals don't understand. They don't know what's happening. You know, even if you hit yeah, a dog by accident, you kick it while you're walking. It thinks you hurt it, but it doesn't know why. You know? Yeah. It's pure visceral animalistic fear unmitigated. Yeah. It's like a, a cat or a baby or something. Like, what's the, what's the equivalent for... Of like, a, an adult pig is the equivalent of a human toddler, is that right? Yeah, or same, same with dogs. Dog. Yeah, like a two-year-old two year old kid. Mm -hmm. When would we accept turning kids into 
a product to be bought and sold for mere pleasure because it isn't for calories because it, it destroys calories to produce this stuff yep so so it is just that is that is the reason and i'll admit it bacon though yeah it's negative calories actually yeah <clears throat> um So, I hate that argument. I know. I it. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> um, or the, another one that also, there's two other ones that also bother me a lot. One is culture. And because culture is like, okay, so it's your culture to, what if it's your culture to just fucking kill people? Is that acceptable? No. Um, every dish you have can be substituted with something. Um, or that's just the circle of life as we are kind of indoctrinated as little kids but you know like we're the top yeah, of the like food chain I... yeah we're apex predators it's what we do it's what they do blah 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 and i'm just <sighs> yeah you're not es you're not an eskimo it's not your culture to just eat meat and <laughs> die if you don't you fucking idiot yeah <laughs> <laughs> you live in the fucking west you have a supermarket that has like ten thousand different items in it it's fucking culture yeah and I think it's something really we're just all, yeah, we're all just all indoctrinated into it. Because you ever ask yeah. a person to kill an animal, they don't want to, usually they don't want to fucking do it. Even if they have to mm -hmm. eat it, you know, they don't want to be part of that part of the process physically. They just want the end product because they don't have to see it. And that's what they've done all their lives. Like imagine asking someone, why do you go to church every Sunday? And then they say, I've just always done that ever since I was a tiny little kid. Yeah, that, that's that's why you've been doing it for a, a long time. Why do you keep doing it? Why are you going to do it this Sunday or the next Sunday? And then they say, because I've always done it. It's not it's not a good argument. <laughs> yeah. It's just shit. It's, it's just habit. It's not a justification. It's like, it's just like, it's like asking someone, uh, it's like asking a pedo or something, why why do you do that? I've just always done it. <laughs> why are you, <laughs> are you going to keep doing it? Well, I've always done it. It's just, it's not an argument. <laughs> exactly. But, oh, I guess the, the other one I completely forgot about for some reason was the moral, is it moral equivalence? I can't remember what the fucking term is, but, um. Moral equivalency? Yeah, you know where it's like, mo sorry, moral relativism. Shit, fuck. All right, Jesus yeah. Christ, I'm retarded. Um. <laughs> Yeah, just moral relativism, where it's like, oh, well, like, different cultures, and this kind of gets tied into the culture thing, but the culture thing was more about, like, food, um, or, like, recipes and shit, but, like, the culture of, like, you know, there's animal sacrifice, um, mm. certain products are only made with, like, animal products, like, leather, or feathers, or whatever, and... You mentioned animal sacrifice, but there's also been child sacrifice as well. That's culture. And oh, yeah. Don't anymore. <laughs> That's been gotten rid of. And we have... It was culture to have slaves as well. <laughs> all this all this stuff. Sacrifice people to volcanoes for the gods so that they're not upset. <laughs> yeah. Or to, to make the sun come up the next morning so you take them up a giant pyramid. Yep. You, you've... You, like those ones that you, you saw. <laughs> like yeah. Take, take people up to the top of it in chains and then just have a, a succession that never ends of fucking heads rolling down yeah yeah i probably step where a bunch of heads are fucking rolling <laughs> yeah well there's all, the, all these cultures we've had and if you were to ask them why they do that they would not say it's just our culture we've always done it they would have an actual reason they would at least try to give a reason like wh why do you why do you sacrifice to make the sun come up well just to make the sun come up they at least think they have a fucking reason <laughs> they at least try yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't just say oh it's my culture we've always done it <laughs> Man. Yeah, it, I was gonna say something, but I lost my train of thought too. Um, oh, like you know how Hitchens or I forgot, or was it Hitchens or Sam Harris? I don't remember. One of them, and I'm sure they didn't even make it up. But... Oh, pegs? No, no, no. The um. All right, because Hitchens did write something about pegs. How uh, he he basically made arguments in favor of veganism, even though he wasn't one. But yeah, it's just an aside. No, yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. But you know when they say. Everyone's an atheist, with the exception of one god. I'm, I'm an, uh, you're an atheist just like me, I just go one god farther than you do. Exactly. <laughs> That's kind of what I feel like all of human civilization has worked towards, right? We don't do 
um, animal, I mean, human sacrifice. Uh, many cultures have stepped away from animal sacrifice. Uh, we, a lot of people don't like animals being abused, even if they ultimately are just killed. Um, like, we agree on so much, it's just that last step. It's almost a moral fact at this point, in the West at least, that you don't kill and eat dogs. Oh yeah, for sure. If you do that... Well, that's another thing. Here's what I have highlighted right here, right? And mm -hmm. there's this guy, I can just read it. In 2008, tens of millions of Americans watched with horror and disbelief when they saw on their evening news an undercover video of cattle too sick to walk, being kicked, shocked, and with electric prods, jabbed in the eyes with a baton, and pushed around with a forklift. All so that they could be driven near to the kill box to be slaughtered and processed into meat. Mm. The person who was caught doing this eventually pled guilty to the charges of animal cruelty. <laughs> because he was giving sick cows electric shocks to the face, beating them, and using a forklift to move them. And his defense was, I was just doing my job. <laughs> yeah. And pretty much. Yeah. It happens everywhere all the time. That's normal. No, I know, but how is this inconsistency not so obvious to people? Like, you're gonna punish him for animal cruelty, but you're fine with him leading them to the kill box? Like, <laughs> it's just yeah, it's like uh, it's like when they were, they were gassing the Jews, and uh, someone took pictures of the like there are famous pictures at concentration camps that that were smuggled out. Like someone there had a camera, took pictures of them when they were about to go into like the gas chambers mm -hmm. and and leaked them out and it outraged the whole world. Imagine if Germany was to then admit, yeah, we are doing a holocaust and we have punished the people that were pushing them into the gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Or or even funny <laughs> or even funnier, what if we said what if we found out that they just treated the Jews very well until the end? <laughs> yeah. You think people would still be okay with that? No. <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine if they, they made a PR... How would you even draft a PR statement to control that? You would say, usually this doesn't happen before they get put in like, to get their fucking heads bolted, bolt guns, and then <laughs> hung upside down to bleed out. Like, fucking, it's fucking so ridiculous. Yeah, and well, half the time they're still alive. If not the, all yeah. the time. Like, they're just bleeding out, freaking out. Oh god, it's just so funny. Yeah, you saw it there. Like, see see everything that he describes, or that was described him doing there? That was all just him trying to do his job. He literally was trying to corral cattle into a kill box. That's what they do. It's not like they just appear there. They have to be mechanically put there. Like, machines have to move them there. Humans have to drive them into the spaces to go through the production chain to actually get to the kill floor. So, there is kicking. There is using blunt instruments, even sometimes metal poles. They do all sorts of stuff to, to just get the job done because they're on a time constraint. They have an overseer. Like they have a have a boss that expects a quota from them. They have to do their job. So if they're if they're in a rush because they've not done enough, they're gonna do all this stuff just so they can keep their fucking job. It's just the reality of the whole business. Right. Which is why it's so funny that he was actually convicted. Or not funny, but ironic. <laughs> yeah. Um And, and it goes on further to say, if people want to eat sentient creatures and there is a competition to provide meat at the lowest possible price, then the system will reward those who meet this demand. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, see see what they're doing there? We're kicking them in and using stun prods on them when they're not supposed to. That shaves pennies off of how much you pay for this stuff. That's that's where it results in. Like, you've... They saved you money as the consumer because they cut corners and did it faster. They're trying to undercut their competitors. Like I pretty much said this without even reading this. Like it's sort of yeah. It's, it's it's all just it's just capitalism. It's just profit. This whole enterprise is for profit, which is why it's so important that you don't subsidize it, fund it, cause the demand with your money. Like we don't have a fucking centrally planned economy where there's a, a fixed ration of meat that goes out to everyone and you can just chuck it in the bin if you don't want it. You pay for this stuff, and then they have to replace what you take off the shelf. It's just, yeah. It's frustrating, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that really is. So, this book also kind of, well, let's go to the next. Why do animals even deserve moral consideration? 
Uh, what's that Jeremy Bentham quote? It was in that Land, and, Land of Hope and Glory movie that, or uh, documentary. It's a. Uh, do not think about whether they can reason or whether they can speak. No, the question is not whether they can reason or whether they can speak, it's whether they can suffer or something like that, along those lines. Yeah. I think I was close. So that's it. Like, if, if, if a human can't reason, we don't treat them like shit. We don't take away all the rights because they can't think well enough. Like, if you're not smart enough, you get less rights. Fuck off. And then if they can't speak, what, what if they're a mute? If they're a deaf, dumb, blind mute? then they don't have rights like everyone else. Of course not, that's that's absolutely ridiculous. That's why rights exist for those people. So, they, they, they can still suffer. Like someone someone that's me mentally disabled, physically disabled, can't talk, can't think, can't articulate, can't scream. They can still feel pain. And that's why it's important that they are given consideration for whatever pain they are gonna experience that we impose on them. That's, if, mor if morality doesn't, if morality does anything, it does that. That's what it's for. Yep. Uh, what was it Sam Harris? I don't want to quote Sam Harris too much because, you know, he's a Zionist show. But, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, his his moral landscape argument, you know, if anything matters at all, it's conscious experience. And that's, you know, but if you boil down everything, that's what us and animals have in common is yeah. we're having a conscious experience. Maybe we're having it at a higher level or you know whatever but um if there's anything that's good or bad in this world it stems from the ability to have a conscious experience and people will tell you that um morality there's no objective morality there's no um set way to do things and you know there's some flexibility in that with the moral landscape you know there's optimal and suboptimal choices but at the end of the day we all act as if something is bad if it hurts us unless you're mm -hmm. suicidal in which case you're deemed not in the right state of mind <laughs> you're not acting normally you have an issue so why people don't extend that to animals especially once they learn is just And this is a thing, they do extend it to animals, but only some of them. Well, it's right, a right, double right. standard. Yep. Yeah. So there's... they actually grant this most of the time. Yep. Yeah, there's actually, let me see if I can find it, like one of those like famous billboards. Um, uh... Like people will run onto a highway to save a, a baby duck, a duckling. Uh, People will. I don't know if I don't know if it applies to a lot of people, but I will do it. Like if there's a spider in the bathroom, I'll put it on my hand and put it out of the window. You know, I'm not gonna fucking blast it with the shower head and just <laughs> yeah. ruin its fucking life. I've never done that. That just there's something just deeply wrong about doing that. I would rather just see the see the spider on my hand for a second and then never see it again and know it's not. I haven't fucking murdered it. Like what what the hell? I, I've, even when I was a kid, I wouldn't do that. It's just there's something just wrong with it. Um, I I do actually do the same thing. Funny enough, I <laughs> I don't know if you remember Anna, remember um from uh, like years ago. Uh, maybe. Well, Since we were. yeah. Uh, she. I once told her. Well, I had sent her like a Snapchat of me picking up a snail from like where the path was to my house and putting it in the grass so that no one would step on it and she thought mm. i was retarded but <laughs> <laughs> but you know <laughs> why should it die just because i don't feel like paying attention you know like you only have one ex chance at experiencing anything in this world sure it's just a fucking snail i guess to most people but you know i think all experience Anything with experience has some sort of value. Um, it was the one that was there and that had your attention in that moment. Mm -hmm. So even though there are fucking trillions of snails in the world, and there's probably like snails underneath car tires right now, that was the one that was there in your world at that point that had your attention. Mm -hmm. That was the only one you could do anything about, so you did. Yeah. This is what I was talking yeah. about, this one. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a double standard, and that's a good sign. Yeah. Because, of course, people eat rabbits even in the West sometimes. Like, you, If you bring that up, half of the time people will be like, what the fuck, that's horrible, I had a pet rabbit, or my friend had a pet rabbit. But then uh, other times people will be like, oh, what, what, did, what did that rabbit taste like? You know? <laughs> yeah. And then if you go further to the left, you see fucking dogs, and uh, obviously in China people eat dogs, some, some Asian countries people eat dogs and think nothing of it, and then you have that realisation they, they eat them. That's why it's there in that fucking sign in that position, and then you go right to the end and it's cats and you, it's like no one eats cats and then you think why not? <laughs> you know why not? Why do we eat? Why do some people eat dogs? No one eats cats. Why do a lot of people eat rabbits? You know it's why does absolutely everyone have no problem with cows even though they're the the biggest and some of the most intelligent <laughs> animals on earth? Yeah, it's, it doesn't make fucking sense. You just have to think about it. It makes no goddamn sense. Yep. And then sometimes you see those videos where, like, an animal has been held captive its whole life. Or even just a dog that's been in a shelter for too long. When someone rescues them, how happy they are. And if mm -hmm. that's not a complex emotion worthy of consideration, then what the fuck is? <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, that's a hell of a range of emotion there that they've demonstrated. Yeah. Like, what the fuck... They can understand. And we think pigs, yeah. Pigs can't do that. Like, come on. I mean, when I the videos I have seen of the slaughterhouses, like you look at their eyes and it's just pure terror. You can understand their facial expressions. They are not happy. They're very yeah, scared. Yeah, you see them crammed in trucks. They're looking out for help from the people with the fucking cameras half the time. That's the footage they show you when they're looking directly into the fucking camera. Yep. Even if the person with the camera is in the distance, zoomed in, they still manage to find the camera. Like, they fucking want help. They would take help from anyone, you can tell. It's actually funny, because that guy, Gary Yarovsky, he's actually... Uh, I think he's banned from some countries. And he was arrested in multiple for, like, freeing animals that were held for, like, fur coats. Like, being bred for fur oh, right. coats, like, minxes and shit. He, like, let two... Yeah. He, like, he let, like, a thousand or two thousand minxes just fucking roam free. Like, he just like, <laughs> let them all out. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, Imagine being that person that just lifts up the fucking hook on the gate and then they'll just bolt. <laughs> you've, you've saved hundreds of lives, thousands of lives. Uh, that's fucking hilarious. I guess though, like, see the ones that are born? This is something people don't get. The ones that are born are already fucking screwed. It's when they're killed and replaced by new ones that it starts all over again. Yep. Like, people say, what happens to all of the the chickens and the sheep and the cows and <laughs> like like it's gonna just stop overnight as opposed to just being drawn down over years or decades and then finally ending you know the perpetual fucking nightmare finally just comes to halt grinds to halt that's how it happens <clears throat> that's how it happens it isn't just some overnight fucking thing every every farm animal that currently exists is just doomed to a life of misery that ends terminally in a fucking slaughterhouse that's what's that's that's one of the things that are the most sad about it. They're 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 born just to die. They're all doomed. Yeah, what's it that? It goes back to what you were saying at the start with yeah. uh, or, or what we were saying with anti nihilism. Like the only way to, to stop this fucking nightmare is to just stop birthing new ones to replace them. That's the only way it ends. Yep. And um what was the what, it was one of those like famous vegan sayings at the time when I first went became vegan, but um what was it they're born before they're born their date of their execution's already been scheduled or something yeah, exactly. like that what would you rather to not exist or to be born as a fucking broiler chicken to just limp around in a shed with your your bones creaking under your horrible hulking mass like they're they're we've actually got to the point now where they're so precocious like their developmental phases have been brought forward so so far that they come out of the egg with obese adult bodies that that just has to have weight packed onto it like these are these are non-viable grotesque organisms that we've engineered with selective breeding and and they're just they're just fucked up pieces of shit like they they i think something like 30 percent of all animals we raise and we rear for their flesh 30 percent of them are lame 
or they have pelvic problems because they're so deformed because they're basically just there to be muscle tissue masses that get bigger and bigger and bigger from the moment they're born pretty much especially with chickens like it's it's fucking grotesque yeah I would, mean, would you rather be one of those or would you rather not exist that's the question <laughs> i'd rather not fucking exist you would rather not <laughs> exist so why are we paying why are we forcing them to exist with our money it's so fucking cruel it's so inhuman that's why i would never do it i would never pay for this shit like i would say imagine if we did that to humans but humans kind of already do it to themselves but can you imagine if like the fattest people like aliens came out of nowhere took the fattest people they could find genetically engineered so that whatever kids that they have oh or mind. just selectively bred them over thousands of fucking generations that, yeah. are, that are all miserable found found a way to make the gestation period one month instead of nine so you can have mm -hmm. 12 babies a year until you mm -hmm. know eventually you're slaughtered for some other shit but um <laughs> and then that child that you bore is already super fat and then you add even you feed him something that makes him just like a massive balloon by the time they're like six months old and then they're slaughtered and eaten like yeah what, what would you say to an, an alien that was saying oh this is just what we do like you know we're the alpha <laughs> organism you long, know long chicken though long chicken though exactly yeah it, it tastes good it's unique it's a delicacy uh, it's different from everyone else i can't find any substitutes for it anywhere else in the galaxy it's just too good you know it's like, see, when, I, when, I, when it's in my mouth, I just feel so good. Yeah. I have an yeah. autoimmune disorder that just isn't... <laughs> <laughs> I need to eat it or I get a rash. <laughs> I need to eat it or my tummy hurts. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm so used to it. It's my culture. We've been intergalactically raiding and just tormenting entire civilizations for fucking hundreds of millions of years. <laughs> You're just the next one. You're just the next one. Yeah. Uh... In fact, that's why we've allowed you to do this, because now you're eating more, which means we get to use you more, which <laughs> Yeah, at least you get to exist, and you, we give you food and everything, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you at least get to live. Yeah. At least you got a chance to live. Yeah. <sighs> uh, this no. is nothing. Uh, uh, breakage. You know what breakage is? Uh, in what sense? Uh, business term. No, I don't know. In terms of the balance sheet. So it's... Uh, this is from, it's, it's even in Breaking Bad in one scene where they're talking about uh, inventory that goes missing or doesn't get sold, you oh, know, okay. get profit yielded from it. Mm -hmm. So there is an expected breakage in every single one of these industrial facilities where there is basically a known amount of inventory that is just going to die in infancy or just going to have an infection. Oh, you mean like waste? Come. Yeah, like a certain percentage of waste. That's calculated. Yeah, like, and, yeah, like it's it's totally priced in and factored and calculated. And yeah, it's made as efficient as possible for as much profit as possible. Like it's that's that's part of the cost of how we do this. There yeah. is a percentage of animals that are going to just have a miserable short existence and then just expire. Like if it's in a if it's industrial chicken farming, they're going to just sort of be lying in ammonia and they can just expire like they're, they're gonna just have organ failure from infection from the ammonia eating away at their tissues until they get they get an infection and then it spreads and they just they just die after hours or days of lying there and that's acceptable like we know it's happening all the time in all these facilities and we don't care they just they just scoop them up and throw them in a bin and park it outside and it, and it happens every every few days every every week whatever it is it's just it's just how we do this it's just breakage it's just it, it makes everything more profitable and work better for us. We make more money when we just let this happen like this. Like, we're not going to run in and do CPR on ailing chickens to make sure they don't die pointlessly. No, we're just going to let them because it's cheaper. And not only that, when we know that they cannot um, form a pecking order because there's just too many of them, the mm. solution isn't how can we mitigate the aggression by making their lives better. You know, I mean, they're de just, them. they de beaked them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, let's and torture with, them even more. <laughs> yeah, and with uh, pigs, they snip their tails, so yep. and also their teeth, so they're not going to cannibalize each other like that. With cows, they singe the or bulls, they singe the horns, so they don't grow out and cause problems and kill each other like that. Yep. Uh, and yeah, we, with we, no anesthesia. The way we, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just it's cheaper. It's it's not worth uh, mitigating their suffering to administer that. But it is worth administering antibiotics, you know, to reduce <laughs> the amount of uh, expen medical expenses or uh, manpower <laughs> we have to expend. You know, having doctors on hand. Nah, just antibiotics, and then the ones that make it fine. Well, that's what's. Oh, this is a quick aside. I don't know how. I mean, I don't think you have to go to the doctor much, but whenever I've had to go to the doctor and like ask for antibiotics or anything, a lot of them are very hesitant to do that because you know mm -hmm. they don't want the antibiotics. You know, yeah, they evolving. should be. They absolutely should be. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But the main cause of that bacterial evolution is the animal agriculture, because they're just fed copious amounts of antibiotics, even just as a preventative. Yeah, prophylactics. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you it's know, like I'm half just half or 60% of all antibiotics in the West goes to fucking animals, not even ourselves. Yeah. Yep. It's a disaster in the making. TDR, TB, totally drug resistant tuberculosis, all this other shit. Yep. Like, we're just we're rendering all of our our drugs fucking worthless by by just overusing them. And at the same time, we have all these animals manufacturing all these zoono zoonotic diseases zoonoses so it's just a we're, we're actually just eating ourselves into demise covid was nothing like if if the calculations are, re are that i remember are right then something like every 10 years there's going to be a, a major outbreak where there is a a zoonotic disease that that jumps and becomes transferable between humans like covid was so every 10 years or <laughs> When when's one gonna come along that's just way worse than COVID could ever have possibly been? You know. Well, I don't know if you remember this. I'm sure you do. Uh, the bird flu, the swine flu. Um, yeah, that was what went... roughly ten years before COVID, roughly. Yeah, I used to go on holiday to some fucking coastal town where one of the first birds with H one H one N one. Yeah. Yeah, where it washed up and it caused a nationwide panic. Like I was. Like the the year after, <laughs> yeah. the year before that bird washed up there and tested positive, I was sitting fucking piling rocks up and you know digging trenches in the sand to keep the sea back, all mm -hmm. this stuff, like right in the exact fucking spot probably where the bird came up. So yeah, I remember being shocked when I saw it in the news. So yeah, and I, I, I I've fucking been there. That's where I did all that shit. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucked. and I remember when the swine flu was big my high school didn't do this but other high schools actually just completely shut down because one kid had it and they like deep cleaned all the lockers they did like they went through all this trouble to make sure that it didn't spread but we don't do the one thing that would never let it happen to begin with <laughs> you know like mm. all for profit mm. yeah, yeah exactly it's infuriating I don't know <laughs> it's like what I'm dealing with right now with Creative Assembly, where they just what's kick the can kick the can down the road. Like that is a civilization threatening can kicking down the road right there with it. It's absolutely ludicrous. Like yeah. imagine pricing that risk factor into the cost of a burger. Like you take away the subsidies for burgers, so it's like twenty pounds thirty dollars <laughs> for one a burger. burger now. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then you factor in also the risk for the R and R to effectively mitigate or neutralize this added threat from zoonotic diseases mm -hmm. now each burger costs like 50 quid or 200 fucking quid or like 300 dollars it's absolutely ridiculous you know i mean if that makes people go vegan i'm fine with that but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know making it go up to that but um fuck what else was it i guess this is a good time to segue into the uh the environmental impact and ethics mm -hmm. um because even if you're not a, even if you don't care about the animals themselves, but you do have some sort of, you know, double standards, so you love humans and you want them to flourish, you would still go vegan, just to yeah. save the world from not ending, you know? A plant-based diet would be an obvious conclusion, yeah. So. Like, it's inevitable. Yeah. What is it, like, the biggest... Um, single contribution one person can make to the environment is being vegan like mm -hmm. the most impact one person can do by themselves is to go vegan it's not to not drive a car which is it's not to fly in planes not to fly in planes compared, compared to being a vegan that that just pales in yeah. comparison yeah so i mean 
I don't know how much you have to worry about that because I'm sure Scotland has hills. Um, the UK has a bunch of hills, right? Everywhere. Uh, yeah. Florida's yeah, flat. Yeah, if the sea rises, we'll be, we'll be fine. Most yeah. Of, most of us. Yeah. Florida's flat. So, <laughs> mm. and I'm sure South Florida will be the first to go in any kind of a flood scenario where, you know, the water just rises. Um, and that's just one aspect of it. There's also all the fucking hurricanes that you get battered by and oh, like yeah. Tornado Valley, all this other stuff. Yep. The only one that you're not just making a million times worth is fucking earthquakes, basically. <laughs> it's like the only <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything else. It's just going to be coming for you non-stop, faster and faster, harder and harder forever now. Yeah, what was it? There was like a record number of hurricanes this year, I think. Um, mm. Or like named storms. I mean, luckily most of them didn't hit Florida, but I mean, all you need is one. And if anything else after that, you're just fucked. I mean, there's people who when let me just do a quick aside hurricane ian which was category five that like swept through south west florida and then up to like north east um diagonally i think the storm was larger than the state itself um <laughs> it it just like i could show you buildings that look like they were just never there <laughs> like pictures of <laughs> and like that's a direct consequence of all this greenhouse shit that we've caused from animal agriculture um Native Americans were right and they're getting the revenge it's going back to being how it was before just stripped clean no buildings yep just need to have the land back there now <laughs> are there even <laughs> no it's been stripped I don't even... are there enough of them to have the land back <laughs> I don't even know uh, I don't know yeah uh, the US government I don't see the US government ever doing that while we're on this subject mm -hmm. of uh, land one of the worst arguments that's the most annoying and it's one that I saw come up in the Earthling Ed thing with Infowars where mm -hmm. some Infowars woman was interviewing him at some event it was the Basically, first one right when they're on the road yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like he was ambushed by an Infowars fucking reporter or something. <laughs> he just wrecks her. And yeah, he, he handled it basically perfectly like he always has, but there was something that really annoyed me about it, which was they were talking about the environment and land use, and of course they are climate deniers, so it's like they were mm -hmm. just ignoring that to have the argument anyway. And she kept saying this silly thing where if everyone goes vegan, what will they eat? Because they're gonna have to like this it's like you're gonna have to all right we've stopped eating the cows that are just standing there eating grass sometimes in their pens so now we have to eat something else all right so what we're gonna have to do here now that we're not eating those cows that are there just there you know just mm -hmm. they were always there and they're <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to find land somewhere else and just plant all of this fucking wheat just fields endless fields to replace the meat that we were eating because we need something else so we're gonna just carpet the planet with fucking fields of plants now so that we don't all starve <laughs> and it's the most stupid fucking argument that you can make and the, the annoying thing is she made it like three times over and over again she wasn't listening to anything he said because he pointed out that especially in America and this is something that just comes up even came up in, my, in our discord mm -hmm. he fucking said okay so we, we feed these cows something like 90% or 80% of their diet is food that we can eat and that gets converted into animal product calories at a rate of something like 20% with chickens it's like 40% with frogs it's like 40% with pigs it's like 30% with cows it's like 20% or 10% or something like the, these conversion rates are terrible every time we raise a cow in the west in an industrial facility we are just deleting calories every single time so the, the the question is you have to just ignore how everything works in order to even ask a question like that it's completely ill-formed and of course the fact that we have to grow like i think the number is uh america grows enough food for 800 million people yeah. so they they're feeding like four they, i think america is barely net exporters 
So it's like they must be feeding like four or five hundred million people's worth of food to animals and then eating the animals. So these calories are just being wasted so that we can have calories from something else that tastes different. That's what this whole industry is about. Like you take cheap calories from plants that, that's abundant. Photosynthesis is, by the way, photosynthesis is what makes all fucking calories in the first place. Every fuck it's called like you mentioned earlier the circle of life. That's mm -hmm. not even what it's called. It's called it's called the fucking food chain. It starts off with photosynthesis and then it ends up at us. And if it has to go through some other animal to get there, that is another step and that's fucking massive waste. It's like it cuts it it cuts it less than in half or by a factor of three or four. It's just fucking stupid argument. Fuck's sake. Yeah, so all these extra calories being wasted means that we're just wasting all this land. That's what the argument... It's like, it's a backwards argument. We're wasting calories, so we're wasting land. Simple as. Simple as. Alright. <laughs> Alright, that's me ranted. <laughs> fucking stupid argument. I hate it, man. Uh... <laughs> Thanks for being quiet and just let me fucking destroy that shit. shit. <laughs> no, I, I... That was actually the first interview I ever saw with Earthling Ed. Um... Because I think that was when he was newer to, like, the actual, like, uh, social media aspect of what he was doing. Mm. Um, and, yeah, InfoWars person, definitely not connected to reality. I mean, Neil could have had that interview. <laughs> no offense. To Neil. And no offense to Neil, because he actually, you know. <laughs> uh, so, well, that covered a lot of things. The efficiency part of it. And the ancillary oh, no, effects. I just through all. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, I remember when I worked at this Jewish nursing home. Um, funny because the head chef was German, so that was just a little funny. But um, <laughs> his name was Rolf. <laughs> he would talk about how because they would serve veal, you know, like once a month, and yep. we, you know, I don't know if you know this, but in a restaurant, if it's if it's a changing menu every day before the people are allowed in we go over the menu uh, and he would explain to us for some reason only with this never with any other food he prepared what happens to veal <laughs> in the process of getting a veal and how sad it was mm. but he would still order it to give to them and i just thought what? to give to who what like the the old people like he would order it to cook it and and serve it to them all right you know because veal um baby lambs yeah baby lambs they just they're taken i think immediately from birth kept new ones as well that's what they do with the, the boys i think yeah they keep them chained so they can't move so that their um must their meat is tender in a dark room mm -hmm. for i don't remember what the time length is it's not a very long time i just don't remember if it was if it's days or weeks but yeah, they do that, keep them in darkness, and holy shit, is that why we export our view to Denmark? Because they're allowed to do this horrible shit. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Sense. Go on, yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah, and then they're just they're slaughtered, and then you know, served <laughs> or sent to wherever they're going to be cooked. Uh, it's mm. a very, very, very sad process. Um, so I'll have to look that up later. Yeah. Um. Because I remember I might have even been in that documentary as well, but uh, we don't make our view here that we consume. It fucking comes from Denmark, but we do export baby or young lambs. So it might be because of a legal thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to check. That's like because we yeah. do have rights here. Animals do have some. Uh, there are some regulations. It's not. Uh, it's not the worst, I think, and, and that might be one of the few things that are not allowed. Whatever they do to produce fuel. Yeah. What What country was it? Where like Denmark. You no, not that one. No, the, right. the, the with lobsters, you can't boil them alive. Like you have to kill uh, them first. Is it? Is it? Denmark? Is it Switzerland? Uh, I don't know. I think I've heard that before, though. But yeah, it's weird. There's there's just sometimes occasional countries that opt into 
like something must happen there there must be some scandal and the people of the country are just get outraged and disgusted and they push a bill through and and now this this one small practice and a massive wider horror is suddenly outlawed and nothing else is well we can't boil lobsters but we can cram chickens into a tiny facility and have like 10 per square meter you know yeah and what was it there was something i was reading where because you mentioned the ammonia earlier um mm. like the workers there have to either spend very little time like it's like a very it's like chernobyl you're in and you're out <laughs> to get to get like to do what oh you need to God, do in exposure there exposure limits yeah <laughs> because or you have to wear like a mask or something because the ammonia is so strong and will make you sick that you just you can't you can't be in there and wow they but they obviously leave the chickens in there and then the first mm -hmm. time the chickens ever see sunlight real sunlight is when they're being transported to get killed so um <laughs> yeah yeah because they keep them in a dim light to stimulate them to, to feed because they trick them into thinking the sun's about to come up so the worms are coming out the ground that kind of thing yeah it's, it's still fucking horrific like it's so it's like deliberately engineered for a tiny little bit more profit down to every detail of course yep. of course as it's yeah. every detail is manipulated and manufactured to just exploit the shit out of a living being <laughs> like yeah which is why if you're like against capitalism why i know some people yeah. disagree but how can you not not me no i know but i don't know how you cannot be a communist and vegan because you care about exploitation first and foremost who gives a fuck if it's about a class necessarily? I mean, that's not the necessarily the most important part. I yeah, think. what motivates you to care about class and injustice? What is it that motivates that? It's like, it's a, there's got to be a moral reason for it, unless it's just some mechanistic explanation of what will happen. Like if you have a a principle, if you have a moral conviction behind your political positions, then why would you not have a moral conviction behind your fucking positions on animal welfare and? how animals are exploited it's just be consistent that's the thing and yeah it's like it's like a anti-capitalism and veganism are complementary why what like if, if you're a, if you're a vegan and not anti-capitalist it's it just doesn't like it, it doesn't make much sense to me and likewise all the way around they're they're incomplete like they, they complement each other like you have an incomplete worldview unless you have both unless you just don't care how I look at it anyway. No, I, like part I, of why I'm an anti-capitalist is, is that I'm a vegan. Veganism reinforced the shit out of my anti-capitalism. Well, I'm just, and that's obvious from what I've been saying. Another way around. Yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> I, it's also what is it? Um, I think if you're a vegan, you should also be a feminist, right? Because you're you have to care about these female animals that are being raped and tortured and genetically engineered and all that shit. Uh, it's funny, when I was in university, I used to see stickers all over the school. Um, of course, it was always posted by the different haired colored creeps, but, you know, at least they... <laughs> broken clock, right? Um, uh, yeah, because can you imagine um, if all you cared about was making it better for the class you belong to just so that your life was better but not because you actually care about any of the principles and if you were just rich then you wouldn't give a shit and you would advocate for that class like what the fuck <laughs> like that you don't have yeah. that's just team sports that's not even I mean... yeah it's like slavery like there's a there's a class of slavers then there's a class of slaves that's massive and if if you're a fucking slave, are you really gonna say, I don't advocate for all of these other slaves because I recognize that they can suffer as slaves, as captives, like owned property of other people. I only advocate for them because they are the same as me. That just seems completely un incomplete and unprincipled. You, you obviously advocate for yourself as a slave and for your other slaves because you see all the suffering that they're going through. <laughs> like that's the basis of the whole opposition to it like if slaves were having a great time it's not like you would be motivated to overthrow the fucking slavers <laughs> it's because the suffering is the fucking motivation behind all of it 
That's why every slave has an obligation to overthrow the person enslaving them if they can, like to free themselves because it's it's an injustice. It's it's fucking cruel and. It's like you were saying at the start, uh, picking between a random human or a random animal. How about picking between a random owner of a fucking meatpacking facility and the innocent animals inside it that are getting killed every day? Which, which one would you pick, you know? <laughs> I'd let the animals trample <laughs> the meat owner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like you should... Unless you're going to try and exonerate him with some convoluted excuse, like it's, it's just his job where he's just following orders, then you have to accept that he's responsible for immense fucking cruelty and he just he just goes along with it like he's fine with it he, he could just hang up his fucking boots get another job do something else not not lend towards this industry this practice he yeah just fucking leave i mean i know we let the ukrainian nazis out but or off but <laughs> <laughs> but um the german nazis i mean if they said we were just following orders that wasn't an excuse to anyone you know yeah, it was my job. I'm just following orders. It's a shit fucking reason for doing something horrible. It's, it's just an absolute shit reason. Like, you, you're directly responsible for any direct action you took, even if there was a wider problem. Like, you, you might not be responsible for the Holocaust, but you are responsible for whoever, for whoever you shot in the head and kicked into a fucking trench that, that you made them dig, you know? Yeah. It's like that. They try and, people try and obfuscate between the, the two of them. I even saw this with, uh, like there was a really comical example of this with some guy that was shilling fucking DLC and putting affiliate links. He tried to fob off his own responsibility for what he directly, fucking consciously, fully knowingly did as just saying this is just what everyone does, you know? Like, fuck that. If you do something, you're responsible for it. Like, fucking stop being a coward. An actual moral coward. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was, um in university there was this or more specifically law school there was this uh orthodox jewish guy who was unhappy with a meme i had shared or not a meme a, a provoking provocative photo or a drawing but it wasn't like provocative in like a disgusting way it was more like it was like the roles were reversed the hum the 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 animal was the one um in the humans. Right, exactly. <laughs> and um, he brought up this weird... He didn't say anything on the, on the actual post, but when he saw me later, he wanted to talk to me about it. And his his thing was, you know, because he was, he was Orthodox, so they have a particular way of viewing the world, and they... He said something to the effect of, like, you know, God put animals on this earth for our benefit. That's what the Bible says, or the Torah, or whatever. Oh, yeah. And he's like... Is that one of the reasons <laughs> that you've given? Uh... Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he's like, you're also anthropomorph anthropomorphizing animals. And I said to him, I'm like, well, the 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 main point of the of the image is to demonstrate that suffering can go both ways. It's not an exclusive human experience, and mm. that if the roles were reversed, we clearly wouldn't like it. <laughs> So there's no anthropomorphizing here. Um, he obviously didn't really have much of a response and kind of just defaulted back to, like, you know, religion, which at that point it was just a default. I didn't give a shit about that because I was already an atheist, so, like, that wasn't going to sway me anyway. It was just him basically mm -hmm. talking to avoid. Um, and, it's, and then I spoke to a Muslim girl who agreed with me, depending on the animal, uh, especially about pigs because they sweat on the inside and how Allah knew and how he was right and all that stuff. A um, <laughs> little weird. But other than that, um, it seems... Why would God create us just to torture things <laughs> and eat them? None of that made, <laughs> makes sense to me. I mean, even God and... What is it? says that you should treat your slaves well right in the bible somewhere or whatever religious text i think all of them have some variation of that like you don't treat your slaves like shit uh i don't know the bible says that you're allowed to beat your slaves but as long as they don't die within uh, like two days or three days so if you if you beat them so hard that they die within a fixed period that's that's not allowed that's too bad but you can beat them <laughs> okay then maybe i'm yeah. misremembering or i'm 
citing to the wrong religious text. I don't know. Um, but well, the Torah does say that uh, there are tribes that are put there so you can conquer them. Like they're there just so you can subjugate and kill them. Yeah. With the Amalekites. Oh uh-huh, yeah. And of course, uh, that's gonna, that's probably going to be getting brought up in uh, popular media nowadays. Oh yeah. With what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that could be like a ten-hour video or stream, honestly. <laughs> or well, that could go on forever, actually. Not even ten hours. Um. One thing that actually, you, s- it's it's actually almost a comical argument. It's almost like the person is just so unaware. Or not even an argument, but like, you know, it's just something that just gets blurted out of people's mouths is how extreme veganism is. Um, and I just, it's almost, it's just comical because the person who's avoiding killing an animal is the one who's being extreme versus the person who has PTSD because he's working in a factory where he's torturing animals and slitting their throat that's not extreme <laughs> you know like oh. yeah it's totally backwards and even out of scale like you are like it, if, if you just flip it all right so the opposite of extreme is probably something like trivial mm-hmm. what can be more trivial than something that you eat today just on another day you know mm-hmm. like the last five minutes most of the time you forget about it like a year from now you won't even remember that you did it but in order to do that you paid f- for an animal to be born raised in horrible conditions be murdered be butchered be put through this whole convoluted chain of production just so that you can have a different fucking flavor you know it's it's like they, they have it completely backwards like they're the ones that are so trivial and pay and have and have such a lack of basis for what they do that the person that takes the whole thing even remotely seriously and acts remotely accordingly and puts things even remotely in proportion is the one that's fucking extreme it's it's so it just shows that their frame of reference is fucking absolutely whacked yeah and that i don't know if this is going to be an analogy but when I had my psychedelic experience, there was a moment where I felt there was like a weird clarity. I'm not saying it was accurate, but there was this weird clarity of like with how fucked up the world is and all the shit that goes on. I understand why people commit suicide. Like mm. they seem to be the sane ones because they're looking around and seeing everything that's going to shit. And they're like, I didn't sign up for this. This <laughs> this is a horrible experience. I'm out. Whereas mm. everyone else is doing what they can to kind of live in an illusion to not feel that way. <laughs> so who's the sane one? You would think that the person who's suicidal is the one who is not thinking clearly, right? But maybe that person was thinking very clearly given the circumstances. <laughs> and that was the only logical way to end that suffering have um, you seen the sunset limited yet uh no all right it's got tommy lee jones and samuel L. jackson and then uh, tommy lee jones is basically saying the exact same thing as you are and it's up to samuel L. jackson who's like a preacher or christian type to try and convince them that life is worth living mm-hmm. and the end of the film it's basically like he walks out after two hours of being interrogated and trying to keep him alive mm-hmm. to convince them to want to stay alive it just it just doesn't give up and he just like, it starts out because the sunset limited is a train that he tries to jump in front of and th- the main argument of tommy lee jones is that it's like it's all just meaningless and it's just never ending suffering outweighs any happiness and if you if you were to count like if you like what we do is we do not count the suffering of animals like it's not even part of the equation we don't tally up and accumulate it and then balance it we just ignore it but if you were to count that and have that be factored into whether you want to whether you think the planet should have life on it like it's actually a compelling argument like the whole of animal agriculture is a compelling argument not to yeah it's not worth it like the, 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 there's a, a net a, a massive net negative like for every human alive that's happy 
a lot of the time these people aren't even fucking happy, they just munch all this shit miserably. So they're fucking miserable. The thing that they're eating used to be an animal that was miserable the whole fucking time. There's another 20 animals behind that one that, that are going to be next in that fucker's mouth. It's like it's all it's all just pure misery. Like that, you could argue that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was it was hard. It's hard to debunk it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean <laughs> uh, it's like the animals are sad, the humans are sad. We just give everyone medication. I mean, this is more of like I think a US thing, but yeah. or a western thing, but it's just so fucking depressing. <laughs> Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Um the vegans are the ones actually hopeful when you know they're alive, they've made a decision to try and make things better. They're hoping that things do get better. They're the ones actually clinging on to fucking hope. The coroners are just resigned to... Like, there's health problems down the line as well. We haven't even talked about that yet. All of the health problems that result from eating a western pattern diet loaded up with fucking animal products, saturated fat clogging arteries. Everyone has heart disease by the age of 40 and to some extent in, in the fucking west, you know, because it's just so unnatural. I mean, we could segue to that next if you want. <clears throat> yeah, um... I don't know how much so, time you have, if you want to... Uh, I'll be here for as long as you are, I think. Okay, yeah, we can do this one, and then that should be... At least for this conversation. I'm sure there's plenty of other things we could talk about. Um, yeah. Because this one can go on forever, too. This uh, yeah. food one. I mean, the the health detriment, the detrimental health effects. But... Um, so yeah, in America, I don't think this is true in other parts of the world, they are now starting, they have moved the um, the recommended age for getting a colonoscopy to 45. 40, <laughs> 40 if you have a family history. Um, oh man. And that is not because someone was eating fucking broccoli and spinach their whole fucking life. It's because from a very young age, they've been fed fucking McDonald's, and they continue to eat McDonald's. Um, Mm. You know, I've been a vegan for, what, eight years now? And when I had my colonoscopy, just because I'm a fucking hypochondria or dumbass, um, (laughs) I still had a very small polyp. I don't know how long that was there. Uh, But, you know, the guy was surprised it was there, and it's probably from all the fucking burgers and fries I used to eat. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, something to address this whole thing is the mm -hmm. Adventist health studies you know the Linda Loma blue zones yeah Uh, these are people that have basically opted out for religious reasons of any flesh I think they do eat some uh, dairy and maybe eggs I don't think it's much though but like their diet basically constitutes like an almost ideal diet of whole grain plant foods um there's a lot of fiber mm-hmm. there they eat nuts a lot um and these people just have massively reduced rates of things that are typically associated with a western pattern diet especially and especially a diet high in animal products and especially red meat because red meat is a type i think a type one carcinogen is highly suspected and type two is confirmed mm-hmm. so you've got red meat as a suspected highly suspected like but basically that means it is like they've, they've basically just they're just being really cautious and not assigning it that designation <laughs> but it is a fucking carcinogen all right and okay. then you've got processed meat like uh deli and salami pepperami S- smoked and smoked stuff. shit yeah 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 the worst probably is that's probably the worst because it's yeah. got all of these weird combustion byproducts compounds like cyclohexanes and all this stuff so that makes it even worse but it's also like the pre- preservatives like nitrates uh, yep. these these have a mechanism that results in uh biosynthesis of known carcinogens and i think that's why it has the type 2 designation so They've opted out of all of this. They they don't eat any of it, and they have massively depressed rates of bowel cancer. And that's just bowel cancer. That's one type of cancer. Something that I was going to bring up earlier, and, and we just skipped past it, was uh, we were talking. You were you actually mentioned at one point um, 
how, how can you be a feminist? How can you not? How can you be a vegan and not be a feminist? How can you be a feminist and not be a vegan? Because the whole dairy industry is just the most horrific exploitation and perversion of the reproductive process mm -hmm. that we could come up with. Because, like they they forcibly impregnate cows, steal their babies, they cry for days, and then we do that to get milk. That's the whole fucking point. So we can drink milk on our cornflakes. And when women drink this milk, this bo this calf growth fluid, they have elevated rates of breast cancer. That's another cancer. Like, mm -hmm. it fucks up their hormones. Yeah. I think it affects guys as well, like gynocomastia. Gyno guys become gynocomastic. Mm -hmm. Like, they have man tits that, that appear. That's that's uh, demonstrated as well. Uh, so it's like all of these, like, like see, see uh, the reproductive organs? They're, they're some of the highest risk sites for cancers and it's no coincidence because when we're not reproducing anymore we might as well just die so you know that's that's where tumors appear and kill us so when those things stop stop being needed so you've got guys getting prostate cancer fucking women getting breast cancer uh men getting bowel cancer uh all of these kinds of cancers that are involved in eating and reproducing it's just elevated through the fucking sky, through the roof, when people have these diets high in red meat, dairy, processed meat. It's it's like if, if you opt if you opt out of eating animal products, you're halving your incidence rate for all of these types of cancers, which are well, you have a not a very non-trivial chance of dying of one of these cancers in old age, and you're just opting out of half of that risk by just refusing to consume these fucking products. It's, it's that's that's one of the main killers in the west fucking cancer heart disease is the main one and that's probably an even more compelling case to avoid animal products on that basis as well you may want to go into that yeah it's actually i think a little bit more than that too because when you feel good and i can attest to this because this is more recent for me in terms of exercising um they've done studies and when you walk you know, at least 10, 15,000 steps a day, you actually reduce, for example, breast cancer by like 40%. You reduce a bunch of other cancers or just your all-cause mortality goes down by like 50%. And mm. the more you walk, the better it is. Um, and what's the last thing you want to do after you eat a burger? <laughs> Probably <laughs> exercise, walk, walk <laughs> exercise, whatever. Um, so I think it, it, I mean, obviously it's a little bit disjointed because one doesn't necessarily lead to the other, but you're more likely to be active and feel like you want to be active when you're not eating that shit either. I mean, it's the same with like eating too much sugar, right? Sugar crashes and all that other shit. But, um, like that, it, it became a lot easier for me once I cut out a lot of like the simple sugars. Um... But this is another thing. What is walking for? Like, what what does walking end in? Or what, what like for for all other animals? What does walking end in a lot of the time? Like cows. After what do they walk to towards? Uh, their death. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Like if there's a if there's like a, a deer in the woods and it's walking somewhere, what's it probably trying to get to? Oh, food or water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you give people the food, <laughs> yeah, it's like they don't have to walk anywhere. Yeah. But there's no motivation to walk. And after you walk, what do you feel? Fucking hungry. So yeah. It's like, like we've we've totally broken the relationship between doing something and getting something. Yeah. Um. That's why. What is it? I mean, I've noticed this myself. Uh. Just you know, over my over my life, I'm less likely to eat if I have to cook because <laughs> it's work right so yeah. you're probably not really going to eat unless you're actually hungry hungry yeah exactly yeah not oh you know i'm bored i'm watching youtube let me just grab some <laughs> fucking chips or uh i don't know oreos or a soda or whatever because that's the other thing when you're exercising the last thing you want is a sugar fucking drink with the exception of like one of those sports drinks right with electrolytes because you need water your body craves it it actually tastes better when you're thirsty and your body needs it uh like yeah. nothing has ever tasted better to me than when i was 
in high school running track and I had cotton mouth because I hadn't had any water and that water would taste almost like like the purest form of life it's the best way I can describe it like it just tasted so good because I was so thir- I've never had a soft drink taste like that unless just I'm like, like out of my mind high yeah. Just like if it was past you, it probably would have tasted good as well. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I think I started just going off on a tangent there. But yeah. Um, So I'll I'll give you an example. My my uncle has been very overweight for a very long time. Uh, He has like six stents in his heart or some shit (laughs) from all the cholesterol and all the blockage (laughs) and all that shit. Um, and that's another thing I, I don't mean to like go on another tantrum but um, when you're overweight like that and you have like high blood pressure and all this other shit it makes it even more difficult to treat other problems you have because there's an additional risk added to the surgery to the medication you take to the foods you eat um, full morbidities yeah so Yeah, I think in the United States, the number one killer is, is heart disease, followed by cancer. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and I don't... Anything after that, who gives a fuck? Because those two are just so massive. Uh, yeah. Fuck, what was it? I can get a list. Uh, uh, heart disease, cancer, COVID-19, accidents, stroke... <laughs> COVID-19. Chronic... <laughs> yeah, that was number three behind cancer now. Uh, that was 2021. This is the TDC's 2021 report. Mm-hmm. Uh, accidents number four, stroke number five, chronic low respiratory diseases number six, uh, Alzheimer's number seven, diabetes number eight. Well, diabetes is a low down. It's only low down because <laughs> everything else yeah, is, is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, the, there's that thing about. Uh, was it diabetes? I think I think like uh, losing visceral body fat mm-hmm. uh, can reverse diabetes, and then you've got heart disease. Uh, the only thing that's been known to reverse heart disease is changes in diet, and yep. the diet they recommend is pretty much what I talked about earlier with uh, California blue zones, yep. where the whole grain plant based diets. Uh, yeah, so uh, if uh, you can reverse something. What do you think you can accelerate it with? <laughs> like you take you take out animal products, red meat, processed processed meat, to reverse it. How and then you add it back in. What the fuck is that gonna do? <laughs> you know, it's like people people deny this shit. Yeah, I, it's just a bit quantifying it. And I think it's also done. Because, well, it's it's obviously done because they want to keep doing it and they don't want a reason to stop. Mm-hmm. And when you give them a reason to stop they'll they'll rely on anything that allows them to continue whatever the fuck they're doing um even down to making bullshit excuses yeah yeah like culture or taste or convenience or price which if you i I think i said it in that veganism and cognitive dissonance video if you boil it all down it all comes back to taste Mm -hmm. there's really no other reason like, yeah, there's other excuses given as a facade, but when you break those excuses down, it always leads back to fucking taste and texture or whatever the fuck it gives your mouth. Um, and being used to it, habit, being, which may be overlapping with culture there as well right. a little bit. Hmm. And... Um, habit. Habit. I was actually also going to say, I, I've noticed now, like, because I go to this vitamin shop to buy... A, probiotics and stuff mm. and um i noticed that because they sell like you know the beef jerky shit and i noticed that now the packaging says without the nit- nitrates or whatever nitrates and i'm mm. just thinking to myself like is this are we just going to slowly eliminate everything that is making it more carcinogenic just to extend the life of this fucking horrible habit <laughs> like <laughs> yeah like, it's like I, cigarettes, we're putting filters on them now, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is still, you know, 
highly processed and smoked and has artificial shit in it. But don't worry, we took the nitrates out. Yeah. Still a mystery meat fucking nightmare. Yeah. Don't worry, guys, we took the asbestos out of the filters. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But there's still a bunch of other shit in there. (laughs) You're still deeply inhaling combustion byproducts and a fucking gas form right deep into your lungs where it's never meant to go yeah yep and and guess what there's actually plants that help remove that shit from your lungs it's called uh watercress um (laughs) and broccoli sprouts uh they've actually been shown to help clear out your lungs and that was useful that's useful just because you know in every every day you're breathing in carcinogens right especially if you live in a city that uses cars um Mm. you don't think about it because you don't necessarily smell the gas all the time but you're breathing it in if you live in a city so eating that is also beneficial (laughs) in those scenarios uh just to stay healthy um running also helps exercise helps clear the lungs Mm. Uh, what else I just like I'm going off on tangents now. Uh... But yeah, it's no surprise that what you put into your body affects how your body works. Even sometimes for the better. That should not be a surprise to anyone. It shouldn't. I mean, look at all the bodybuilders. (laughs) It's very clear that protein helps you do X, Y, Z. You know, just don't do it. Just don't take the animal protein. Hmm. So. There was that interesting study that had uh, atherosclerosis on cats when they take out the thyroid. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I, that, I always keep thinking about that one, but when you remove the thyroid from a felid, it stops processing cholesterol in the same way all cats do, and it starts to develop conditions similar to what happens to humans when they have a Western pattern diet. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like cats are evolved to actually deal with this stuff, but we're not. I don't know if you want to end on that. No, yeah, we're we're not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, it sounds like junk science to a lot of people, but if you look at our digestive system, how it works with actual carnivores, the way our teeth are, the way we process things. Um, Length of our gut, pH of our gut, exactly. pH of our saliva, how our jaw works, how it moves up and down, yep. how it's similar to a cow with how it chews cud, as opposed to being like something out of the alien movies where it just fucking snaps you know yeah or a cat which is what inspired it right or how plant products actually heal these things that are otherwise irreversible but Mm -hmm. eating the carnist equivalent will actually like you said accelerate Mm -hmm. the damage that's done yeah and also something else that that's just a remarkable thing to remember forever for everyone statins are red meat antidotes that's what they're designed to do pretty much that's a good way to look at it the same way your fridge is a morgue (laughs) (laughs) statins are red meat antidotes your fridge is a morgue your stomach is a graveyard Uh, what would you call your toilet I was actually thinking about that one next too yeah Uh, I I don't even know Graveyard cleanup. An <laughs> <laughs> uh, open. No, no mind. And, and I mean, we. And I mean, we could have. Maybe we can do this in like another conversation. But like, a lot of these things, aside from like heart disease, will cause things like high blood pressure. That high blood pressure impacts your kidneys heavily. Next thing you know, you have kidney failure, or you have kidney stones, or you have some other kidney problem mm. and god damn you need your fucking kidneys <laughs> it's not as bad as yeah. if your liver goes but you need your fucking kidneys so yeah yeah e- even just a, a uti that goes to the kidneys can cause septic shock and you can die from it yep it used to happen a lot before we had modern medicine it ha- happened to women all the time kidney infection they're dead it happens to old people a lot still to this day kidney infection they're gone I, I didn't know that yeah, like uh, a lot of pe- a lot of old people just die of a UTI that they didn't notice that goes to their kidneys, and 
uh, their organs start to shut down, they're gone. Yep. And, I'll, and uh, on kidney stones, a lot of the, uh, I think, uh, fish and some other things contain compounds for some of the common kidney stone types as well. Like, I think uh, there are some plant things that you're meant to not eat, like Brussels sprouts, things like that. Uh, spinach also can cause yeah. kidney stones, yeah. Yeah. But it's quite easy to avoid those ones, whereas I think the animal product ones are a lot more typical. People eat them a lot. Uh, maybe eggs as well. That's one I think that co that can uh, contribute to kidney stones. Yeah. Hmm. Well, if you ever come to America, I'm gonna take you almost like we're going to the zoo, but to like those like burger places, and you'll see oh, like the, you'll see the glass of like the people who are like you think I'm a fat slockus. I mean, these people are like <laughs> three times my size, with like a triple yeah. or quadruple fucking layered burger going into their mouth, and. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be a sight to see if you ever come but yeah George Carlin was right <laughs> what wasn't he right about <laughs> alright <Nothing. laughs> uh, right, I'm gonna end the, the stream now